Last week, we were able to make the Giordano tubeless. I couldn't believe that this was possible with the wheels and rims that it came with. Those were not tubeless ready at all, but somehow I was able to make it happen. At the end of that video, my daughter hit me in the head with another delivery. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's inside. Looks like it's the KS E10i dropper post, but it's internal. Well, I guess we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do with it now. And I also picked up a new seat post clamp because with a dropper post, there's no need to have an adjustable seat post. I can just clamp this thing down and save a few grams. Now that we got this dropper post and the seat post clamp, let's go ahead and let's start installing it. Real quick, I want to go ahead and thank Jason Udovich for giving me the idea to contact Walmart about the chips in the frame. He did this exact same thing with his Bauer and got back a whopping $115. I wasn't quite that lucky, but I did get back 5% on the total cost of the bike, which lowers this bike down by $32. That's going to be for a sweet upgrade. Now that I've picked up this internal dropper post, there's one last thing that I need to do, and that's figure out how I'm gonna route it. The only thing I can think of is to actually drill a hole into the frame, but I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea at all. Huh? Who are you? Me? I'm Good Mike. Good Mike? You know, the one who has reason, common sense, doesn't wanna take risks, you know, just plays it safe in general, you know? Plus, I also have this really good hair. Good Mike, you don't know what you're talking about. What? Now who are you? Who, me? I'm Bad Mike. Bad Mike? Yep. Pretty much the baddest dude you're ever gonna know. I help you make the best decisions of your life. Unlike that guy over there, he doesn't help you do anything. He'd probably be sitting on the couch eating Cheetos if it was up to him. I don't even think you should have bought this bike. You should have went out and bought a Trek Roscoe. It's so much better and it already has all the parts you need on it. So you don't think I should drill a hole in the frame? You think it's a bad idea? In fact, you're telling me that I shouldn't even have bought this bike? It's too much work altogether? Well, you know what I think you need to do? I think you need to drill that hole. If you don't drill that hole, you're never gonna live life. And you know what? Life not lived is not worth living. Get to drilling, my friend. I like this guy's idea. I think we can do this. All we have to do is take our time and we should be able to get this right. Well, I guess here goes nothing. Hand me that drill and let's get to drilling. Whoa, where the heck did they go? Well, I got the drill. I guess there's one last thing to do and that's drill some holes. Now that we got the starter hole drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and gradually step it up all the way up to a 25 64 size drill bit. That should be big enough to get the cable through and possibly fit a grommet in there. Now that we got the seat tube hole drilled and we know the cable's gonna be able to fit through there, let's go ahead and drill the next one. This one I'm super worried about. It's actually right up at the top where the shifting housing comes out. I don't know if this is gonna work, but here we go. I can't believe that I actually got that to work. The cables fit in there perfectly and I didn't even chip the paint at all. I found a major flaw with this bike. For whatever reason, Kent decided to make the seat tube 30.4 millimeters. 
This is just slightly off to fit the most common dropper post size of 30.9. So in order to get a dropper post to work for this, I had to drop all the way down to a 27.2 millimeter. I had to pick up this shim. It's a 27.2 to 30.4 millimeter shim. That'll allow me to use the 27.2 millimeter dropper post. Let's go ahead and let's install it. Now that I've got the dropper post installed, let's go hit up one of my local trails to see if this dropper post really makes that big of a difference. This dropper post definitely made this ride a lot more enjoyable. Once you get a dropper post and you get used to it, you don't want to go back. Not being able to lower your seat during a technical descent or raise it during a climb really does make a huge difference. This is definitely my favorite upgrade so far. Last week we weighed in at 33.71 pounds, but this week we went up just a little bit at 34.22. And that's to be expected considering we went from a standard seat post to a dropper post that has a lot more going on with it. Overall, I feel like this was a complete success making an internal routing on a bike that wasn't ever designed to be that way. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And there you go. Whoa, I don't think so. Ah, oh. oh. Gosh, again? Man. Oh, this might be the best upgrade yet. <laughs>